Well, I thought that one was the last video, but I was wrong, so let's go ahead and finish up this last page. Plus, I added a couple of problems, so. All right, a measure is up for approval by a city council. The measure needs a two-thirds majority to pass. Okay. So we need two-thirds majority to pass. If five of seven <clears throat> council members voted for it, did it pass? Okay, well, let's see what we've got to look at. We have to compare the five of seven members of the council to two-thirds. And there are a couple of ways that we can do this. Okay, I can say, all right, well, two-thirds is equal to 0 0.667. <coughs> then I can also say, well, five out of seven members is five over seven, which is 0 0.714, which is more than two thirds, so it passes. Now, there's another way that you can think about it. If there are seven total members, if you have two-thirds of seven, that's two-thirds times seven over one, which gives you 4.67. <coughs> so I would need more than 4.67 members. So five members voted for it. Five is more than the 4.67 needed, so it passes. So there are a couple of different ways you can look at that. Okay, okay let's talk about gerrymandering now. We know what gerrymandering is. It is um, a way of influencing district boundaries to support whatever cause there is. And it lends in some things being underrepresented, some underrepresented, some and overrepresented. Okay. All right. So in the 2020 election, Democrats received 46% of the statewide votes in Texas. So Democrats are 46% of the state. Okay. And it also says here that there were 36 House seats and 13 of those were held by Democrats. So we are going to compare the percent of Democrats and we are going to compare that to the percent of seats. Well, of course, the percent of Democrats is 46.5%. To find the percent of seats, we have 13 out of 36, which becomes 36.1%. So when we compare those, we can see that the number of seats of seats is less than the number of Democrats of course we're doing this in percents so they are under represented All right, and our last question here, um, we're going to consider a state, let me see if I can focus this, we're going to consider a state that has 30 voters, 30 votes, half of them are Republican and half are Democrat, and it's divided into five districts. Does it meet the requirements? Well, there are two requirements. Each district has to represent the same number, so if I take 30 divided by 5, is six in each district. Okay. 
So that's good, because if I count these up, there's six in each one. And is it contiguous? Yes, because all the representatives, none of the districts are split. Okay, so yes, it does meet the requirements. So how many are won by Democrats? Well, let's see. I'm just counting them up. This is Democrat. This is Republican. This is Democrat. This is Republican. And this is Republican. So there are two that are Democrat, three that are Republican, and zero that are ties. So if they vote along party lines, it's going to be the Republicans who will win the election. Okay. Our final problem for the map above, we want to do our own redistricting where there is at least one tie. Okay. So I'm going to take care of that first. There is at least one tie. That means three Democrats and three Republicans. Well, the first one I see is this one. So this is our tie. Now I can split the rest of them up any way I want to. So I'll do these six, and this is Democrat. I'll do these six. That goes Republican. If I do these six, that's another tie, and these six, and that's another tie. Okay, so let's answer the questions. How many are won by Democrats? One. How many are won by Republicans? One. How many are ties? Three. So if you vote along party lines, who do you expect to win the election? I have no idea. Yeah, they're actually split up, split up pretty evenly since these are ties and then one district went to each of the, the political parties on the other ones. Okay, that now this really is the last video of this unit, so the end.